Ugh, this thing is so frustrating. Then make a better one. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to Hackbake Mod. I'm Brandon, the cute one, don't tell Chad. And today I got a little dust buster in my hand. And you ever try to, um, you ever try to get a little uh, hairball, a little furball, and try to clean it up, but it, this thing sucks. Well, it doesn't suck, that's the problem. Uh, we're gonna do it better. All right, so the three biggest things, we need more power. It needs to pick up stuff really well, so it has to have powerful suction. It fills up, it feels like in two seconds, so when you do get to suck up stuff, it, it has no capacity. If I may. Okay, that'll work. And three, we need battery life. We should have a target time when it runs. All on. day. In that case, we make replaceable batteries. So that way it's not just the battery that's in it and we can swap the battery. Okay. Okay, got my marching orders. Let's get it. There's no safety guard on it. Don't show this. Now we have a filter. Seriously? Chad, you sick freak! What did you do? I, I made a uh, vacuum cleaner. I would say the power was stronger. I don't know if it's worth it <laughs> size versus the power. Probably but, not. But it looks cool. It does look really cool. Which we need to add that. Looks cool. It looks way cooler than any vacuum cleaner in my house. <laughs> now the capacity. Yes, the we, capacity we definitely covered that. by far is covered. This has more capacity than any vacuum cleaner I've seen ever. Wow. Other than a shop vac. Now the battery. So the big deal about the battery was not so much exactly what battery we use, but that it's interchangeable. That mm -hmm. we can swap batteries. So you run out of battery, you can put a new battery. Right. In. Or if it explodes. Yeah, if it explodes, if you if you're not dead, you can just get Change another battery, battery and put it on. Right. Structurally, the basic components are this big beehive type of punch bowl looking <laughs> thing that yeah. you found in Walmart. This is a section off of our shop vac that we had. And then, you know, this was an extension or a you know, a little, a little accessory. accessory. Yeah. And then this is a, um, it's a schedule 40 drain pipe. The parts are pretty minimalistic. So Chad, um, I'm noticing a lot of wires. This is gonna be, uh, no one's bringing this through TSA. <laughs> Probably not. So let me just talk through the wires here. So you got the battery goes to the electronic speed controller. Mm -hmm. The electronic speed controller does two things. It uh, powers the motor and it also powers the other electronics, which in this case is the Arduino. Why do we have an Arduino on this? So we have an Arduino because we needed some way to control the ESC. Mm -hmm. The Makes electronic sense. speed controller needs a signal to tell it how fast to go. Well, you can't just put like a dial into an ESC directly. You have to drive it. So what we did was use the Arduino as a motor controller that sends the signal to the electronic speed controller. And we used an analog potentiometer to adjust the speed of the motor. But how we did it is this is your max speed. And then Christian helped us write some code to do like a fade up or a, a ramp up is what they call it. So mm -hmm. when you push the button, it doesn't just kick the motor on 
at full speed because it's just more stress on the system. It's not good to go from zero to full throttle. We have it where you press the button and whatever the max is, it'll ramp up slowly to that max speed. That mm -hmm. way it's easier on the system. Some other features, we have the quick disconnects here. So you can take the uh, center section out. So this is how you empty it. You undo those wires and you pull easy, this out easy. and that's where your filter goes. Let's not use a grimy, dusty, dirty, filthy, disgusting sock. So we'll stay with the color theme and I got a pinkish, reddish microfiber cloth. The nice thing is you can use whatever filter you want. Plug your motor in and you're ready to go. But you'll see, here's the design. I think you asked me about this when, when I was building it. The inlet actually comes all the way up here, yet the suction comes from the opening down here. Yeah. And then of course it goes out the exhaust. Mm -hmm. The reason is, is if you have your inlet going directly in the filter, then everything just goes right into the filter. Right. This, by doing this, it allows the heavier debris and all that to fall down to the bottom. So mm -hmm. it loses its momentum. When it comes in, it actually has to do a 90 degree turn to you know get all the way up where the filter is. So keeping the filter isolated, just keeps it a little more efficient and you get less debris and dust out right. through the filter. Because we don't want debris and dust no, everywhere. No, we want it to stay in here. So Chad, this looks really this looks really cool, but how is it working? You mean the motor? Yeah, how? So What's going on downtown? The motor <laughs> the motor is one of these. So I decided, you know, I wanted something small but mm -hmm. powerful. And these are very powerful. Mm -hmm. These will go zero to 80 in no time. Mm -hmm. Wait, um, so this is in there? just one of these motors and I cut down a propeller so it fits in the four and a half inch pipe mm -hmm. and that's what provides the suction. So I think we pretty much nailed all the notes. Right. I'm pretty proud of myself. Oh, easy. Me and Christian were actually using this thing the other day. We were picking up some cereal with it and mm -hmm. it just wasn't quite as strong as I thought it would be. You know, you really hyped this thing up and I just wasn't really satisfied. Did with it, it suck up all the cereal? Yes, but not as strong as I would have liked it. So, okay, so you want it more powerful. I want more power. I want the carpet fibers to be inside here after I'm done using it. All right, well, that's, I guess that's useful for can someone. Can we do it and how can we do it? When we, can we do it? We can, we can do it. We'll do a bigger motor and I'll, I'll design a new propeller that mm -hmm. has more blades, moves more volume of air. And then more power? Yeah, there will definitely be more power, but I'm, I'm certain anytime you add more power to anything, you're adding more problems. Oh yeah, that's, that's pulling a lot more. That's a less than half throttle and it's pulling a lot more. I'm gonna turn it up. I'm gonna go up all the way. We killed it. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> Too much power. What did it cost us? <laughs> uh, $34. <laughs> Happy? Yes, it was so great, Chad. <laughs> so that's what you wanted by more power. You meant more smoke. Yes. All right. You know, we can, we can always go back to the previous design. It worked well. I love collaborating and building something on a tight timeline. Typically, you know, projects like that get a little messy. I think at this point, what I want to do is I just want to clean this up a bit, make it look nice. I'm going to paint the white, red, probably. I'm going to add some lights. Oh yeah. Maybe a nice little headlight right here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right there. We'll have a nice little shop back that's handheld and we'll keep it right here in the shop. Yeah. That sounds sweet, Chad.
good day, Brandon. Yeah, Chad. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, man. Hey, you gonna clean up your mess? Not Chad. Does this make you Dan Aykroyd right now? A little bit. It does wow. look very Ghostbusters ish. Yeah, it does. This looks so much better than before. I think it's just a work of art at this point. It's a functional work of art. I think the fire caused, I think it made it better. It, you know, mishaps usually do. So I cleaned everything mm -hmm. up. There was wires everywhere. There's still wires, but now we add an, an aesthetic. Yeah, to very the wires. clean. Um, the first thing I did was I printed this little custom uh, electronics holder here. You know what, Chad? What? You might be able to get this through TSA now. Really? You think? Yeah. I'm not going to try. <laughs> this is bigger than my luggage. The headlight is probably the coolest feature. Mm -hmm. So you see we have a few, oh, uh, one more control. That's the uh, on-off switch for right. the light. And you even added a little safety. Uh, yes. And one thing I noticed thing. whenever we would use it, that your hand would touch the dial and it yeah, would change and turn it up speed. or down. So I added a little guard there. I found this out in the garage. I love this conduit. I thought that'd make it look pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And of course, I had to paint it. Yeah, you gotta paint it. Mm -hmm. And then back here, we have a little safety screen. Oh yeah, gotta protect downtown. And we did go back to the propeller. We found out it was a little more reliable, but guess what? What? There's more. <gasps> <laughs> what's your breakfast doing on the table? <laughs> well, because this is powered by what's called a brushless motor, mm -hmm. there's no like bare wires or brushes or anything in the motor to get shorted out by anything wet. Mm -hmm. So technically this is waterproof. I haven't tested it yet, but you should be able to use this on wet stuff. Oh boy. So I brought down a nice little bowl <laughs> of cereal. <laughs> Make sure you get that headlight. Make Chad. sure we dark. can see what we're doing. Can you see the cereal? Oh, I can see it. All right, let's see what happens. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chad. I should have tilted it back. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're not going to cry. No. Nah. That's spilled milk. Yeah, that's just paper towel or two. So, that's it. I think uh, uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, no problem, Jack. And uh, hey, if you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Make and sure like, you drop a like. like on the video. Yeah, like it. Comment something you guys would like to see us do next, another little DIY project. I'm Brandon. I'm Chad. And we'll catch you next time.